Today we're going to be modifying this Re Bluetooth keyboard. I use it mainly for multimedia uh, with my projector and whatnot. Um, it's a handy little keyboard. It runs about 20 bucks. Um, and since I bought it, they've made a handful of different models. And w the, one of the main problems that I had with it was that you had to, um, here's the left mouse button, and you and if you want to select something, you, it's kind of tough to hold and drag when you're holding it like this. So what I want to do is put a, a mouse button right up here where my index finger is. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, modify this, find out what the traces are, and uh, print off a button and see if we can get this thing to work. All right, we're going to start by disassembling this. Uh, real simple, it's just six Torx bits. They're T5 Torx, and we'll go ahead and pull that apart. And then it's just snapped together, so you might want to get something to pry it with. Um, I'm just going to slide my fingernails in there if I can get that. Alright, so what I did here was I just peeled back this um, illumination film uh, for backlighting the keyboard, and then you could see where the traces go from the um, left click mouse button. There's the left click mouse button, and then I just track the traces. Now I'm done with that. I'm going to put that back down. And you can see what I did here was scraped off a little bit of the trace here. And be, being careful not to uh, uh, cut the trace because that would, you know, make your left mouse button not work on the keyboard. So you have one connection here and your, your other connection here. And what I'll do after this is just take a p small piece of wire on both of these traces, go up to my button, and I'll probably have to glue them down at points so it doesn't move. Um, and then we'll go on to drilling the hole and making the button. Alright, it really helps to have solder paste in this situation. Uh, when I tinned these uh, traces, I had a little bit of solder paste on there. And then I, so I left a little bump. So you don't have to worry about overheating things or anything like that. I just tinned the end of these wire, wires and then melt it all together like this and then after you get these soldered you're going to want to put drops of uh, super glue or hot glue whatever you got uh, to hold everything in place all right what you're going to want to do for the button is you're going to drill uh, i'm going to drill an eighth inch hole and you can probably go bigger than that if you want uh, in any shape you want if you're going to 3d print your own button um, but we'll just go ahead and take this uh, keypad out of here first. I've already marked this hole, kind of where it was comfortable for my finger to be. Um, we'll see how this goes. Not too bad, I'm working with limited tools. I'm going to have to deburr this guy and uh, then design a button for it. Okay, now we're going to make a model of the button. We're going to start by making this base. So this flange area will be the part that actually holds the button from falling out. And we'll go ahead and make a simple, rounded... Alright, extrude that. We'll make that three millimeters. And now for the actual button part. Another extruded part on this face. Just a simple round button, because I just drilled the round hole for it. And we'll make that 3.7 millimeters. The hole is about four millimeters, so this will give it a little bit of room and uh, some space for error as far as far as extrusion goes. It's a pretty small part. Three millimeters long would be plenty. The actual distance between the edge of the keyboard or the, between the width of that keyboard is about two and a half millimeters. And I just want the button to stick up a little bit above the surface so you don't accidentally hit it. 
So we'll go with that. And we'll round this edge here and give it a half millimeter radius. Good. All right, and now we're gonna make a little clearance for the circuit board um, where it lays down on top of the circuit board. And we'll just do an extruded cut for that. And we'll just, that would probably be about right. I'm just gonna eyeball this one. And it's gonna cut a little bit into the button. So we'll do a 3.5. And that should be good. Just to give it a little extra clearance. And there's your part. Uh, next we'll throw that into uh, the repeater program that I use for my 3D printer and print it off. Okay, now it's time to put this button in. Um, I did have to modify the design a little bit, um, just for clearance on this board. So, it's a little bit fatter here at the bottom. Um, we'll go ahead and put, start putting that in. Let's see if I can get it in there. Alright, here's the button we're going to be using. Pretty tiny little button and I wanted to add a little bit more support behind it so I printed off this um, piece just a random wedge shaped piece um, from the 3D printer and I'm going to put a little little bit of glue on the back of of the button and glue this piece right to the back of this. Now we just solder our leads on there. You see there, button, nice and smooth. I sanded it a little bit uh, before I put it in, but yeah, works great. Okay, here I'm gonna show the keyboard in action. And there's the button, it feels really good. It feels just like it was supposed to be there. And we'll go ahead and select something. See that, that's much easier than trying to select with this key for sure. And it actually feels better, I, I prefer this. Uh, to select things in general. So, yeah, there you have it.